Well, David, you're wearing a little bit of the blood from that fight. Uh, Wiley hit you with a couple elbows from the bottom. What was going through your mind when that cut opened up? Honestly, the cut elbow was like the the softest strike he hit me with the whole fight. It was like it barely touched me. Boom, I, my head barely moved, and I just seen it gushing. He hit me a lot harder a lot of different times, and I didn't get cut. So that one was... That was kind of weird. Like it didn't. That one didn't hit me hard. He hit me hard a couple other times. He had kind of reined up and started throwing some elbows down at my head, and those hurt. Those kind of swelled me up. But like it was weird. That one didn't really affect me except for the blood. Was there a little bit of? It's not stitched yet. It's not stitched. Okay. <laughs> Was there a little bit of concern that they were going to stop the fight? I didn't feel like there was. It was kind of getting in my eye right away, but it was on the side of my head. I wasn't too worried about it getting in, you know, getting a stoppage. Um, maybe I should have been in the second round when I was on top. I kind of just tried to control him, and I didn't do too much damage. He was hitting me probably more than I was hitting him. Talk about your walkout song. People are, people are digging it. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't like going out to, to. Who did you walk out to? Uh, Taylor Swift, shake it off. Yeah. Taylor, if you're listening, <laughs> just remember me. Um, yeah, I'm sure she frequents Share Dog, but uh, yeah, I don't like going out to, to, you know, metal stuff, any hard stuff. I like to keep my, keep my intensity low until I get in the cage. You only have, only have so much adrenaline to expend in a fight, so I don't want to use up any extra. Talk about a couple of significant changes for you made in your career, um, changing at the lab and also moving down in weight to 155. Talk about those things and how they improved your performance. Man, the cut down to 55. This is the first time since I was a freshman in high school I've been 155, and it was a tough cut. But, you know, I came into the cage probably over 80, about 82 or so, so I put on a ton of weight. Um, I think that kind of helped when I was on top. I'm a wrestler. I feel like my biggest strength is my top game. So I think coming down to 55, my strength will move down and I'll be able to control people a lot more. And training at the lab, you know, my old gym at Next Edge and the Res Rumblers, they're good gyms, I got good coaches, but there's just not, at the lab there's, we've got like 12, 13 guys in the UFC at 155 and 170 between there. There's just such high level guys that, and there's no easy rounds. Training at the lab, I can't, there's no such thing as an easy day, you know. It's so much harder to train with all these other guys. I got two other guys of my training partners that I train with on a daily basis that are on this card, plus John Baragi, he's at the lab. Obviously, I don't train with him. I'm quite a bit bigger than him. But, you know, I got three guys on this one card with me to train with. It just raises my level up that much more. I have to go hard every day. Um, everyone looks at Ben, everyone looks at how hard Ben works, he's the hardest working guy I know and he just raises my level and everyone else's level in there. Besides getting to make a mess all over the cage, what, what did you like best about your performance in this fight? Uh, I fought hard for 15 minutes, I feel like uh, I still need to work my top conditioning, like taking people down, taking them down, I didn't get tired, so on the feet I didn't get tired, whenever I'm on top of someone I still that's when I get the most tired, and that's probably not how it should be as a wrestler, but I feel like that's what I need to work on. When I'm on top of someone, I I don't know, I panic. Like, I feel like they're gonna submit me every second of the fight. I'm like, oh my God, he's gonna throw up a spinning reverse triangle and break my neck. <laughs> and, and I'm on the feet and I'm getting cracked. He's kicking me in the head, he's punching me, and I'm like, no, that's good. You know, he hits me with a knee, he got me with a knee in the face, and it's like, boom. That's good. But I take someone down and it's like, oh my God, he's going to submit me. You know, Whiteley's not an Abu Dhabi champion or anything, but I'm still on top of it. I'm like, oh my God, he's going to throw up his legs and break my neck. He's going to spin around four times and rip my arm off and take it home with him or something. So I think that's what I got to work on most. <laughs> so is it really the panic that makes you, that makes you a little tired, not really the actual you know, physical exertion? Yeah, I, it's probably just getting my heart rate up whenever I'm on top of him because you know, like wrestling is what's hardest. You know, I'm, I'm running through a blast double, I'm picking people up, and I get on top and I'm still feeling good. Then I'm on top of it for 15 seconds and my heart rate gets up to like 200 beats. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm gonna die. I don't know, that's, it's weird. And I got black belts in the room that I go with. And I mean, not, not that I'm tapping them out, but I still, I battle and I don't know. I gotta work on that. 
also, um, just because I don't really know very much about your background, but they mentioned you have some, some Native American roots that you're pretty proud of, or can you kind of go into that a little bit? Yeah. yeah, I walked out with my tribal flag. I'm from Pine Ridge, South Dakota, the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. We're Ogallala, Lakota. Um, I guess some of the chiefs from my tribe that you might have heard about, like Red Cloud and Crazy Horse, but you know, I can't wait. Um, I'm down in Arizona, so I don't get to see my people. I'm going back home tomorrow. I got some stuff that I'm gonna do. I'm talking to some kids next week and gonna be working with some kids whenever I go home. And I just, I'm proud of where I'm from. There's not many people where I'm from who are well, there's no one where I'm from who's a professional athlete. Obviously, there's no one in the UFC. And my people support me. I go home and uh, it just like, it's it's gonna be crazy when I go home getting this win. Whenever I lost, it was all supportive. You know, everyone's blowing me up on Facebook and Twitter. Hashtag Old Law Lakota, hashtag Team Bulldog. And I can't wait to go home and just see everyone, see my, my tribe and, you know, some of the elders and they all look and want me to do good for you know the kids that look up to me and stuff. That's probably it.